Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Tea and Tequila, the podcast. I'm Steph. I'm Mela. And um, today's topic, we are going to discuss a quote that I wouldn't say it triggered me. It just ignited like thought and conversation between Mela and I. Um, and it says, here's a trend that I'm seeing. I don't hear anyone else talking about it. 40-year-old wives and mothers of large think six-plus kids, conservative Christian families, often homeschool families, suddenly engage in multiple fairs, often one-night stands, which then is not an affair, it's one-night stand. That's literally, that's why there are two different things. Anyway, uh, divorcing their husbands and ultimately abandoning their, their family for a chance at a happy life. Chance at a happy life, in quotation marks. Um, I have had easily 30 different men reach out to me about this exact scenario. Obviously, I don't know them all personally, but the ones I do know, eight to nine, were good men. Were they perfect? No. Were they faithful, hardworking, decent husbands and fathers? Yes. So what's behind this trend? We can do a whole podcast. Up. We need to do an episode. Wait, so, so, uh, so this girl got reached out to by dads that were left. It's a guy. By. It's a guy. Who, oh. Who did the tweet. Yeah. I'm so confused. So he's just like, why do you think there's a trend of women like cheating on their husbands and leaving them and primarily conservative marriages? Mm. Well, it's pr fucking the problem is religion. I mean, I'm well, sorry. I point. hate to say it like that, but the whole no sex before marriage and, you know, promiscuity is, is a sin and the devil's going to eat you alive and all this bullshit. Like, all that faux pas. Are you kidding me? Women, like, are grown, like, grew up, or, oh my God. <laughs> Women grow up being taught like you can't be like that. And then you have to get married and all this bullshit. Well, not even that. I mean, we're yeah. all taught that. Yes. Yes, that. But also, like, you also teach them that their only, like, role in life is to be a mother and a wife. And then you're just supposed to accept whatever your husband does. Like, oh, your husband never helps do the dishes. Oh, your husband thinks that, you know, changing a diaper is what women do. Or, like, you know what I mean? Like, whatever it is that, like, it's just completely, like, a like asinine and insane yeah. is okay. And then they get surprised when the woman's like, this doesn't make any fucking sense. I'm just going to leave you. Like, like, okay, so you're, essentially what you're saying is, like, I'm thinking more on the quote now, like now that I'm thinking back on it. So the guy said something about like, oh, why are all these women living men? Like, oh, they have good jobs. They are good husbands and good fathers or whatever. Yeah. In their minds, in their perception, though. Like, that's the exactly. thing. Exactly. And, so, and like, you perceive, so like, yeah. Right, right. You perceive, like, and the issue is, is a lot of men do the bare minimum. Oh, yes. So, like, and then they think it's like, that's supposed to keep you around, like, but yeah. And then they they don't understand that that's like not worth it to people anymore. Yeah, like, and I think it's funny. Like, also, did she want to have six plus kids? Like, it's <laughs> nice. It's it's always nice in theory to like, oh yeah, I want this big family, and I want my kids to have friends. You know, I mean, like, be able to be friends with each other and yada, yada, yada. Until you That's got six kids. Though. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. Until you got six kids. And then now you all just like, I don't want, I don't want to be a mom anymore. I never, a lot of times, mostly some of these women don't even want to be parents, moms to begin with. Mm -hmm. But because they were told this is what you're supposed to do, they didn't have like a choice. Mm hmm and also if if because it's one thing if it was just women getting divorced but if it's also men having one night stands and or affairs then it also means that you're not doing something that's like emotionally beneficial or sexually beneficial to her oh yeah 100 percent. and thus most she's of the like, time it's emotional yeah i and mean thus, literally most of the time it's emotional and thus that's why your wife cheated on you mm-hmm <laughs> like don't lie <laughs> yeah and or 
Like, because even there's some people who think that, like, the girl being on top, so, like, um, what was that, cowgirl, is, like, demeaning to men, and that only um, men that are, like, question their sexuality will allow a girl to be on top. Um, what and then, like, girl? look, I'm Where did you hear this? You got to get on the internet, okay? No, I don't want to. This is why I don't want to get on the internet. Are you kidding me? Um, no, this is a, this is definitely like a very small percentage. I mean, there's also men that think that putting a tampon up your vagina is like stretching it out. And then Mike, and is, then it's is so funny, it's like using a tampon is like girls shouldn't do it because it makes them loose. <laughs> and I mean loose in like both ways, like sexually promiscuous and like actually your vi vagina being loose. <laughs> and I'm just like. But you're you're so first of all, you you telling on yourself. Cause if you think a tampon is stretching out of the vagina, what does your dick look like? Number one. <laughs> I know, I was just gonna say that. Number two, like if women have legit babies, and then their vagina like goes back to like a normal size. Why do you think that a tampon that ain't but you know it's half an inch thick? It's embarrassing. it's embarrassing. Like, tell me you've never actually seen a vagina <laughs> without yeah, telling I mean, you. Yeah, like, <laughs> I don't even mean like in just like I just mean like in general. Like you've never seen porn. Well, we will say too that a porn is really damaging. Um, we can do an episode on porn. Um, that'd be a good one. Um, is really damaging. <laughs> men's idea of female like of women mm -hmm. because like they think that one like all women should be able to do like all you know things sexually from like blowjobs to like anal like you know I mean things that like aren't necessarily mm -hmm. I guess there's a lot of things happening. that these females on these porn things do and they pretend they like it and i'm like yeah that's you're you don't like what's happening right now stop pretending no, just no. Like, this is a guy's porno like nothing irritates like me more than watching porn and the fake moaning oh god just like so repulsive stop. and it's like high pitched and just like Ugh. no one sounds like that literally no one actually what's <laughs> insane is like if you actually know about your body and you know what's being hit and where it's being hit. That's not at all the frequency you would ever put out of your mouth. <laughs> so if you're making noises that are like, you're in your head, that's all you're doing is thinking about having an orgasm. You're thinking about trying to look sexy. You're thinking about like the whole situation. Yeah. If you're putting out noises that are like, oh, that's your your root chakra. That's deep down up in there. That's all the way <laughs> down past your stomach. It's all the way. It's the vibration of your pelvis, literally. That's that's the, that's the vibration, the frequency, and the sounds you should be making. Like, <laughs> it's not satanic. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I remember, I mean, remember my I, roommate. I have had these problems. That's so like that's why I know so well. I'm like I I'm you can't lie to me. I've been there, done that. Like I did the the fake orgasm things before because I was in my head about and it was nothing to do with like my partner. It was everything about to do my, with my disposition and just not being comfortable and just only feeling like I'm like I have to portray the sexy like the sexy image, not just like who I am and what I am is sexy. As it is, you know what I mean. Um, yeah. Um, remember my roommate Caitlin in college. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we always made fun of not made fun of. That makes it sound really bad. But we always like <laughs> would comment on the fact that she just was very like promiscuous. She would like have sex with these people, yada yada, right? Excuse me. And I think we're probably like never have ever or something. Maybe we're just like sitting around drinking and talking. This girl said, and I will obviously have never forgotten it because I just was like. Ooh, I was in shock. She said that she has never had an orgasm from sex. I said, what? What? 
That's and such said, a common thing, though. It's so sad. And I said never, and she said never. I yes. said, girl, look. Mm -mm. That's why she keeps doing it, because she's like, I need to figure it out. <laughs> look, I've been like, the ability in my head was like, so you just keep having bad sex? Like, I don't understand. Well, she like, gets orgasm from, like, oral or something, probably. I, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I didn't further, I feel like, like, a lot of people say that, but, like, at the same time, it's like, but here's the thing. Out. But that just means that he, like, oh, no, 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 no. Like, just get a vibrator. Or, like, oh, that's right. She never had a vibrator either. Oh, yeah, girl, come on. I said, oh, baby, you I'm just. Get on the wagon here. You just don't even know what's going on. <laughs> but anyway. It's a perfect wanna... intro to the new episode. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to use some of that conversation in the, in the episode. Well, that's like kind of why I started, like, bringing it in. Because I was like, well, this kind of works going into what we're talking about. <laughs> Um, yeah, but let here we can hold on. Sorry, I'm just checking my email. Um, let me get the thing up. That one. Okay, we'll do like an official. What are you doing? Looking at the outline, but it's like I'm wow. waiting for the thing. Like I had to log back into the drive, and I was waiting for the thing uh -huh. to disappear because I couldn't read it. Okay. It's like an official like intro thing. Mm -hmm. Um, how did you start the last one? I really like that, and I can't remember. Mm. Whatever, we'll just we'll just start it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't even think we really have to. To be honest with you, I think we can just segue somewhere like in there. I mean, but unless this will be like a whole other episode. I know, but if you're gonna use clips from what we just said, well, yeah, but I'm gonna use it like in the like later on. In the episode, like, I'm not gonna All right, you do you, Adobe editor. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's just welcome back to TN Tequila. Yeah, okay. TN Tequila podcast. I don't know. I'm yeah. Steph. <laughs> You're like I'm Mela. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. All right. Um. Welcome back to a, another episode of Tea and Tequila, the podcast. Um. I'm Mela. I'm Steph. <laughs> and today's topic. Um, we, it was, it's kind of like an Instagram reel that we saw, but also just, um, kind of like a thing we've kind of discussed a little bit previously before between just the two of us. So pretty much it was a reel of a girl like dancing, you know, shaking her head, working, working, it. um, like, like at a concert, like music festival thing. And the, Caption the overlay caption pretty much said that, um, it's like PMD women, type of situation, yeah. It's like you're healing through releasing the emotions and traumas held in your hip, hips by moving, shaking, and twerking while simultaneously activating your inner wild woman queen energy. Um, and I actually, have, I feel like I've seen this pop up a couple of times in a couple of different like videos, but well, I don't necessarily, um, have like like we're gonna talk about like root chakras and all that and i don't really understand like i don't like follow or like have done a lot of research on like the chakras like i understand what they are and like kind of what they're connected to i will say that moving your body in general makes you feel better about yourself but i will say especially as a woman connecting more to movements that are centered on the hips like pelvis area does make you feel more like a sexual individual more connected to your sexual um inner understanding and i think that um i would have to agree that it really does help with terms of trauma and or like releasing some of that guilt you may have sexually that kind of just ex comes from existing in a society that like can kind of sway you one way or the other like oh you know don't wear revealing clothes or don't wear short skirts or whatever it is and it can kind of start wrecking um, havoc on your own understanding of your se inner sexuality or inner sexual being. Um, and I do really like this whole kind of, I don't want to say movement we're on, but definitely more like more of an embracement of your inner sexual liberation, your inner sexual person, um, where 
you do feel comfortable like connecting to your more primal state as a woman without feeling like I can't enjoy this because it's not necessarily something that's been previously allowed by society because only men really are supposed to enjoy sex kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I feel like, you know, like our, our mindset naturally is like, is that kind of whole please your man, pleasure your man type of mindset just because mm -hmm. for, for many years, for many years. And like, you know, you don't wear revealing clothes. Like, oh my gosh, if your skirt's too short, you're, you're putting out like all kinds of stuff. And that was not that long ago. So mm -hmm. like, <clears throat> I mean, my grandmother like grew up like that. Like she had that yeah. mindset. She was sitting there trying to strip back for so long because like, you know, her grandkids grew up in the, in the 90s and the early 2000s when belly shirts and and crotch pants came out and like the, mic so what is it, like, the micro skirt or whatever oh my god the my like everything the shorts were like underwear it was like ridiculous oh, and not flattering. not flattering even on like the hottest girls like they really that shit really was not flattering <laughs> like, i'm sorry it just the amount not. of the amount of ass cheeks that i have seen <sighs> because of the short like and I just never understood why that was comfortable. Like I'm not like I have a couple of pairs now, but I I was literally like in my 20s when I bought them, mm -hmm. and they're not they still aren't as short as like some other shorts that I have seen. <laughs> like I don't mind them being short. It's just it's just no. I definitely it's, think it's an each to each your yeah. own thing. But it really was a, a moment of just like everything had to be short for a little bit because well exactly like we went from the 90s with these big baggy clothes that mm. we'd somehow come back to but like we you know we've got the long there's the long shorts like the biker shorts the puffy the puffy this it was kind of like 90s and 80s were very similar you know what i mean you just brought oh, yeah. in different shapes and patterns and switched things up a little bit but everything was baggy everything was clunky fluffy hair this that and the other and then you, we had to go pull polar opposite into this extreme because I think at that time, like everything was trying to break that like sexual, um, uh, for lack of better words, like the sexual mold in the sense mm -hmm. of like this, this idea that we've created, like this is how we have to be to be proper humans in right. society. Right. And like, no, like who, who is saying that? The Catholic Church is saying that. And that was a, during a time when a lot of people were just renouncing their faith. They were not wanting that type of, of, um, of pressure. Yes, exactly. That's the word. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Conformity, pressure, like just being told what to do. Everyone was tired of it. Right. Mm -hmm. So like what's easier than to, to go back to your animalistic instincts, which is sex like free it, you know? We just took the lessons from the 60s of free love and actually did something about it like more ex explicitly, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Um, and so with that being said, actually, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know with that being said, I kind of like had a moment of ADHD brain fart, but I just feel like May I'll take it away. <laughs> I think, well, because like I said, like when we were looking at like when she showed me the video, like I immediately agreed. And then she kind of responded um, to like my like, oh yeah, I completely agree statement, yada, yada, to say something about like root chakras. And like I said, a, pre a little bit just like a couple minutes ago, like I don't really understand the chakras or like, I haven't studied them. Like I don't, I'm not really a yogi or, um, like a practitioner of any type of like Buddhist or any like faith or anything like that philosophy. Um, so like while I understand it, I like I do in a sense kind of agree with the the practice, you know what I mean? The practice or the the philosophy of it. I'm not, I'm will be hundred percent honest and say like that's just not my um my like area of expertise, but I will say that just based off of the quick like Google search <laughs> that I did last <laughs> night, like I definitely agree and I definitely understand kind of what um, kind of what like it all stands for. And I will, and I even talked to my boyfriend about this, who 
literally is always making fun of like Steph for her like use of crystal like love of crystals and like essential oils. <laughs> but even I was telling him, it was like, why I am not in any way, shape, or form like as crunchy as Steph is. I even don't even like to use the word crunchy because now it's like I hate negative. that word. It's yeah. But um, just like I like I mean I've I've used I have a diffuser like I've used essential oils I think they smell good like it's just mm -hmm. like a more concentrated version of what you're like putting in a candle or putting in like a soap anyway um, or like an air freshener it's a mood um, stabilizer sensor mood stabilizer you wake up in the morning first thing you smell are pancakes and and bacon how do you feel it is a good day yeah right it's a feeling it's not a about you know this or that it's it's you wake up and you're like. Oh, okay. Okay. You know, and like it completely sets the precedent for the day. And that's mm -hmm. what the like the the crunchy essential oils and you know crystals or you know yeah. some people some people have a whole tea ritual, like the really fancy tea rituals. Uh, oh. my ritual is honestly coffee. I'm drinking tea right mm -hmm. now, but um in the morning coffee like i do the slow press all that i want to get a like sexy pour over that's like all glass and like make it really sexy but <laughs> i'm gonna win in cinema but it's a, it's a it's a ritual it's a ritual and and having sense and and grounding things like that especially scents you can use candles they're just not as healthy as essential oils because essential oils will literally attach into your your nerve like into your body like into your cells as you inhale so like when you do that you're pulling your breath in cleansing all that crap in your head and then you keep pulling keep pulling keep pulling it all the way down and then you breathe it all out it's a little more effective than just plain breath work because the the oils that you choose can can help to enhance certain feelings, just like the bacon and the pancakes, you know, and yeah. so and that's a technique that can help you ground yourself down, can help like cleanse out that root chakra. Mm -hmm. That's something that's that's for anybody. I mean, ask. Absolutely anybody. You don't have to be a yogi. You don't have to be a spiritual person. You don't have to be this. You don't have to be that. But if you're feeling stressed out, no matter who you are, stopping and breathing, really, really intentionally focusing on breath, grounds you down. It calms you down. Mm -hmm. Oxygen, oxygen <laughs> calms us down. It clears our minds. It clears space so that we can process whatever emotion is coming up or whatever. And when you can process whatever emotion's coming up, you can you can sometimes find what that trigger is. But it's it's this it's the smaller steps. Like starting with your breath. Yeah. Starting with shaking. So like so many people are afraid. No, for real. So many people are afraid to like wiggle their butts like literally they'll sit there and they're like this is me and i'm like no like shake shake like wiggle it for real like i want to see it wiggle and jiggle like it, because <sighs> the stiffness is the trauma like the stiffness the it, the fear of shaking is the fear of 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 losing control for so many people and that's why so many people are stiff in the bedroom because they have to have control. Mm -hmm. They're not focused on, on, you know, giving and receiving in that moment with whatever that person is putting off energetically. They're focused on maintaining what they need to feel in order to get the outcome that they think they can get mm -hmm. by trying to maintain that. Mm -hmm sense of feeling you know what i mean yeah can you just explain like what the root well i guess like chakras in general but like specifically like what the root chakra is well, i'm sorry you you is that a question yeah that is a question no. yeah well that wasn't a statement <laughs> <laughs> okay so your root chakra is your foundation chakra um so when you if you want to like pull it into comparisons or um or kind of into layman's terms for a visual think of like the foundation of your house it has to be poured 
It's the first thing laid down. So it's like in succession of your life, it's the beginning years of your life. It's most of the time your mm -hmm. childhood. It's the things that have deeply impacted you. So like most of the trauma that we all have stored in our hips, are, it, it, it lives from our childhood. So that's why mm -hmm. it's so hard to shake it out because it's not something that happened from our ex-boyfriend. I mean, yes, he could now affect that chakra, right? But most of those deep-rooted things, the only reason he affected that chakra was because you already had they something be, from your yeah. chakra, right? So most of it is things that have happened to us growing up, mm -hmm. impressions, you know, the core, the core moments. Um, and a lot of it, a lot of it is, is, is something most of us are unaware of. I think that like the, the, it's easy to know when your sense of self sometimes is being challenged because your stomach literally churns, right? You, your heart races a little bit. Your stomach churns. It does like a flip. You want to vomit. You're like, oh my God, I'm going against myself. That's what that gut feeling is. Well, that's your solar plexus chakra. That's your sense of self. So there's a, a fine line between the two. Mm -hmm. That's why I say it's so hard for people to dive deeper into that root chakra sometimes. Like, and I honestly think until we all become more comfortable looking silly and twerking and dancing and not having dance be such a competition. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't want to have to go to the club and, like, have this whole situation break out where it's, like, step up. Like, <laughs> in my mind, in my mind, I want to feel like step up, but I know I don't look like that. So let's not make it like that. Let's let everybody feel like step up and just shake it out like no, no one's watching, you know? Yeah. Let's support each other in 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 getting each other to move and to dance and 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 all of that. Um, but really, like the movement is just the same thing as the breath. What is it doing? It's sending energy, it's sending vibration, and it's sending oxygen. Because when you're dancing, you have to breathe heavy. You know, you're like mm -hmm. catching your breath. You're getting into it. You're hyping yourself up. Endorphins are going. You're. <laughs> You're clearing your brain out. Just like when you go to the gym. I mean, you don't have to. It doesn't, this, I mean, you know, you don't have to necessarily dance. But I think the fear, so much, so many people having that fear behind dancing and and twerking and shaking. And um, even like when I say shaking, I mean like tribal shaking. I mean, just like you're stressed out. You're sitting there and you just start shaking your hands. Just shake your hands. Like. Uh, like I mean you see a lot of people who are aggressive in the sense like physical like I like need to punch it <laughs> so like sometimes like I'll do that I'll be like mm, okay Stephanie don't punch anything you know what I mean because it's just it's building up all of it's building up and if you think about your root it's the foundation it's like a tree right so it's going to keep growing 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 if it's growing and there's like issues there or sore spots it, it's going to start to eventually come out. You're going to see it in the leaves. So like mm -hmm. event, you can't hide everything. Yeah. You can't hide from yourself. Eventually it's going to show up somewhere. You're going to see it. You're going to feel it. It's going to come out of your body or it's going to, you're going to, you know, verbally vomit it somehow somewhere in your life, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so. Mila, do you have any thoughts? <laughs> No, I think, I, mean, I think that's, that's true. I think that um, you have to kind of do the inner work in order to really experience like the fullness of life in general. Mm -hmm. um, and I think in terms of sexual, like sexuality and sexual like wellness, like part of that is dealing with any trauma or any like unhealed issues you may have that are preventing you from being able to really like have it with like in, you know in a sense a true sexual awakening like i think that's why you have so many women where they're like yeah i didn't have the best sex sex of my life until i was like 40 mm -hmm. because that's, that's when you like became completely and utterly comfortable with who you are and what you want i mean it doesn't have to be 40. i mean obviously there's people women it happens for a lot sooner but i definitely I do, think with this wellness movement it's happening sooner which is nice 
Yeah, I think that yeah. in the past it, it would be later because it would half the time it would be when women would, you know, be making life changes like, oh no, they got like their husband died or they got a divorce or this, that, or the other, or you the know, children are grown. Yeah. Right. And they're like, oh my God. You know. And I, and I think part of it also is once you hit that age, like you're no longer just having like even even when you're younger and you're having sex because you want to have sex, there's still this idea like, okay, well. I could end up pregnant. Whereas I feel like after 40 and above, it's a lot less of like pregnancy being in the forefront and more so you're having sex because you want to have sex. Like mm -hmm. it's not so much a, oh, look, I'm married. I have a husband. I need to have kids. It's I'm married. My kids are grown. I get to do what I want kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and so like that within itself is a liberation, like mentally and within like I, like even with you said like within that root chakra thinking like because i feel like there is some trauma attached to this idea that you have to be a parent mm -hmm. or you have to be a mother and if that trauma or that that pain point has been resolved like then that's you can, even especially if that's your only thing you really have like kind of holding you back that completely liberates you in a way that you were never liberated before um and i think that if it's dancing that's like going to help you do that then that's great and i think that it's it's great also that we have so many more dance classes as like workout classes now than we did you know 10 years ago even like yeah we had zumba mm -hmm. but like mm -hmm. or like zumba aerobic was, things yeah but now you have like classes where you like you have like heel classes where people are literally doing dances and stuff like sexy heels. dances yeah like it's like, like, like bringing it back for people like everyone who wanted to be a pop star when they were six and they're like 45 now they're like hit me with it <laughs> hit me, baby, all the time. like i just this, think this right here makes me want to like be in a um in the microphone studio. With the ring, yeah. Like I feel like I'm in a recording studio. Like, oh hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Um, and I just feel like the more that we allow women to do that and allow them to be open to those changes at whatever point of life they're in, like you're just gonna have a lot happier people across the board. Mm -hmm. Like they're going to feel fulfilled. They're going to feel fulfilled. And in turn, like the more fulfilled the woman feels, obviously the more fulfilled the man is going to feel. Oh, like percent. It is. Like, a it's it's so insane because I just feel like because of the fact that so many women like can't like they like can't have like orgasms properly during actual sex. I feel like so many men don't know what that feels like mm -hmm. on their end. Do you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like then mm -hmm. when we have when we do that. Mm -hmm. So like they don't know, and like what like they they just don't know what they're missing out on. I mean, <laughs> we can not to say it like that, but like it is true. It's crazy how like it's just so different if you do the work, and like I think that I do think it does go a lot of it does go back though to that whole idea of oh well we are not used to allow be like how to rephrase this we are not used as women we are not used to being allowed to put ourselves first i guess in a mm -hmm. way i can't word it right but like we're not allowed to we're used to putting ourselves last during yeah sex, we're, right? we're especially in sex like, like you're used to the point of it being the pleasure of the man and not the pleasure of yourself Mm -hmm, mm hmm. Or like, even, even, even if it's not that extreme, it's just like, oh, well, like, as long as he comes, like, if I don't mm. come, it's fine. Well, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What? <laughs> like, what? you know, like, that's crazy. And, here's here's oh. how I look at it. If we're both put in work, but only you get to root the reward. Why do I have to keep putting in work? Like, mm -hmm. why? It'd be, it's like, if it, like, if you're, if it was a job, and you like you and a partner were both doing the same job and he was getting paid and you weren't how long would you keep coming to work mm. Mm. like and mm -hmm. i think that's like the disconnect it's like oh men always like because it's 
easier. I don't know this because it's easier for them in a sense, mm -hmm. or at least more um, conditioned to be easier, more like okay. Mm -hmm. Then they don't really care. Sometimes they don't even they don't care whether or not the woman like reaches that point or not. Mm -hmm. Um. So like to them, it's like okay, well, I this is what I came for. I got what I came for. I'm gonna go home. Mm -hmm. Like where for women, it's like okay, well. I did all this and I helped you like you can't even like yes. do anything for me like there's there has to be reciprocity and then the more there is the more there's like an actual bond there and that actually makes it feel better like it is more enjoyable for everyone because oh, if she wow. if she is definitely if she's enjoying herself more like you will enjoy yourself more mm -hmm. like, that's just that's just common sense <laughs> um <laughs> Like, I mean, like, I, I feel like, I feel like somewhere along the line, the whole happy wife, happy life connotation, like term, or the term or saying got a different connotation. Like people started to take it like, oh, you just have to please your wife every day. Like as long as she's happy in the sense of like, oh, you know, the bills are paid and like, don't fight with her and like stuff like that. And it's like, no, no, I don't think that's what they meant when they yeah. said that yeah like i'm pretty sure that they just meant like make her come <laughs> <laughs> come on let's be real here because like at the end of the day like you could be stressed out about a bajillion things if you have great sex with somebody that you really care about like you're like okay we'll figure it out like life shit but at least we have each other you know what yeah. i mean and so <sighs> i mean that took a little bit of a left field from the whole um <laughs> Shaking your hips thing. Chakra thing. But um I mean I do, I do think all I do think that it all relates to trauma. Oh yeah. I mean it and all being does. Being like open. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm wondering then, like, you know, like guys who have like like problems with that, like problems, you know, coming or anything. Like I'm curious if that's just a bunch of root chakra issues, you know? Maybe they just need a good root chakra cleansing. Maybe they had a shitty fucking childhood and they need to freaking cleanse that crap right out of there. Yeah. It wouldn't, I mean, I, I don't think that there's anything wrong in believing that or like looking into it. Mm -hmm. Like, I think everyone, I, I think, think it should be like community. Like there should be more awareness to that. I feel like, I feel like we, we definitely gear it towards women a lot as far as like shaking the hips and getting all that out there and trauma storing there um, because we think of ourselves like, you know, we open <laughs> and, yeah. and like, so we literally have to have like either limber hips or like stiff hips, but like yeah. guys, like we don't really, they don't have to test how limber they are. So like, I feel like sometimes it gets overlooked if they're stiff and stuck. Yeah. Not that kind of stiff. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> um agreed like i definitely think that everyone kind of deals with trauma in their own way but at the end of the day like if it's impeding you in your sexual wellness and health like that is definitely something that should be looked into because at the end of the day everyone has sexual wellness like oh yeah it, it doesn't it's not just women who need to be you know cognizant of the things that are going on with their body and like how they are dealing with sex on an everyday basis like it is men as well because men as well can have unhealthy relationships with sex mm -hmm. like and i think that women just are able to talk about it more freely because for men it's like oh well, if you have a problem with sex and you're gay mm -hmm. and then i don't mean like actually gay i just mean like oh well you just you just must like man that must be your problem like it shouldn't be that hard like you should just enjoy having sex right off the back shouldn't have any like shouldn't have any, you know, comments, shouldn't have anything to complain about, like, I don't get what's going on kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, how, th this isn't really conducive to me having an, a healthy conversation since you literally just said, you know, well, you know, just get over it pretty much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Long pause. Um, <laughs> We could trim that out a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, then, go ahead. No, you go ahead. I was going to say, I know that you had said something about when we were kind of discussing the topic of the podcast, but like the heart chakra. So yeah. like, 
what yeah, how does that I like, did want to talk I did want to talk a little bit about that because they go hand in hand the root chakra and the heart chakra okay. um which I mean really at the end of the day I think it's going to be easier for people to try to connect first with their heart chakra mm -hmm. uh, because you know when you're stressed out that's like the first thing that you can feel you know you're like oh people grab their chest they're like oh yeah so um I think helping yourself to ground down and ground to that root chakra, help to clear it out, you know, identify your heart chakra first, identify what you're feeling, literally sit down on the floor or sit down. I prefer the ground, anything that's grounded. So like the floor outside, anything preferably, but a chair will do if you have bad knees. But I would just sit there, close your eyes, put your hand on your heart and breathe. First, your breath will be very shallow, especially if you don't do this all the time. So that's totally fine and expect that. And then just keep working on it and working on it and working on it. Um, notice like your hand and your chest raise as you inhale. And then as you exhale, sigh everything out. And when you're sighing it out, notice how your pelvis gets heavier and closer to the floor. Um, and then notice how your heart softens at the same time, like simultaneously. So like, I think that the reason we don't like to open up our root chakra or we're so afraid to open up our root chakra is because it's gonna immediately affect our heart, mm -hmm. like immediately. Like most of the time when people do root chakra cleansings, they like hysterically cry. Cause it's like, you're literally digging up like crap that is full on, it's like time capsule. You're sitting there just digging for something that's been there forever mm -hmm. and pull it out and you're like oh my god I forgot about some of this stuff um and so just bringing it simply back you know that breath work I think that that's the key I mean there's many many tools um and I can share them in like a link on the actual podcast or onto our Instagram and our social medias and things like that um but the simplest tool that every single person can and should be using is, is breath work. And you can sit there and you can just, as you close your eyes and breathe, you can listen to the sounds around you, feel the wind if you're outside, listen to birds, listen to anything. The cars going by, don't be pissed off if you live in a city and you can't hear birds. Cause like, I think that that's a big issue too, is a lot of people are like, oh, I gotta be somewhere else to be sent out now. Okay, you live in the city. Just listen to the sounds. It's fine. Listen yeah. To the bars, listen to the people murmuring. You know, somebody just dropped something. Like, notice those things. Pull out your James Bond ears. Like, notice the little things. And breathe. And I think that that is kind of the one and only, first and foremost, golden rule <laughs> in root chakra cleansing and connecting. Yeah. Um, to start it all, 100%. Interesting. Yeah, like like I said, like I am not necessarily a practitioner or like a follower of any thing to do with chakras or like yoga or like anything like that. Like I've taken yoga classes obviously, but um, I do put a little bit more, what's the word I'm looking for? Like credence into anything that's like Buddhist or in, like based just because it has been around for so long. Like when I looked this up yesterday, it said that um, the first like mention of chakras was between 1500 to 500 BC. Like that's a thousand years. Like mm -hmm. <laughs> that is a very long time. Because it's this very simple way to understand the human like emotion center like yeah we have yeah. a physical body right like we have a skeleton we have when we have maps of a skeleton we have our organs we have this we have that but like some it, it can be very difficult to understand emotion which is why oh, i love that one movie it. from pixar oh, my gosh and so that movie? yes oh my god it was such a cool visual of your emotions if you haven't watched it watch it but like the chakras are the same way, you know, they're, they're, they're these little balls that we can envision so we can understand it of how our, our energy affects our body. 
So, of course, like, and they didn't never try to push it too far. They never tried to change it. They never tried to adapt it. They just did simply this. These are our emotions. And this is what, like, when we feel things, this is where it's stored in our body. This is, you know, this is what's triggered as far as disease and, and sickness and ailments when we don't heal certain things. Like, there's been so many, I mean, I don't have all the stats, so please don't quote me on it, but I can, like, give you a thousand podcasts and a bajillion different things to, to back me up here. But, like, there's been tons of, of research done linking emotional wellness that's stored in the body, trapped in the body, traumas, that's been linked to all of our things, heart disease, um, freaking what's the other one diabetes like all kinds of stuff all kinds of stuff high blood pressure number one you know like cardio anything cardiovascular really like there's so yeah. many different things because like think about it too we want to sit here and we want to blame all of our food yes of course <laughs> americans have some pretty low quality foods because we want to mass produce everything but think about what it how you're feeling when you go and you grab a, a crappy food you probably feel pretty crappy you're like eh, i'm too lazy right now i don't feel like going home and cooking i'm in a shitty mood even if you're not super shitty mood you're just like too shitty to want to cook mm -hmm. so you go talk about yeah you store just stored that shitty mood in food in your body so of course you're gonna correlate those things all together and i'm not negating the correlation of that because like yeah those foods are terrible but like at the same time it's not just that. And that's why I feel like the mental health like, and wellness industry needs to keep popping off, even though there's a lot of people that like <laughs> take it to the extreme, I think. Yeah. <laughs> oh, which is a whole nother episode. But, um, but we need to keep bringing awareness to this. Because at the end of the day, what are we all here for? Mm -hmm. I mean, really, what are we here for? Are we here to, like, bust our ass CEO so that we can die? But you got CEO, so you had a good life. No. Yeah. You wanted to be CEO because you wanted to be in charge of something. You want to make a lot of money so that you could go do the things you wanted to do. Mm -hmm. We all just want to make a bunch of money so that we can go do cool things that we want to do. At the end of the day, we're all just, like, wanting to just have fun. Whether you're an adult or a child, you want to just like have fun, enjoy yourself. And that's kind of the purpose of life. Like we're just here to be alive. We're not here to like be so aggressive. And I think that like it's it's difficult sometimes because we have to be, because that's the culture that we've created for ourselves. But physically and energetically, that's not what we actually need. That's why we're all like having shitty sex well not we're all because i'm not but <laughs> but that's why so many people are having <laughs> shitty sex and control issues and never being able to stay in a relationship um fighting for their jobs like it's just you know what i mean it's like this like domino effect it's like one after another yeah mm. And I guess it all goes back to your your point of all the time is it starts with us, man. I mean, that's not what that's not the quote you said, but like in that seems to be a, like the topic or like the overarching underlying theme. tone, yeah, yeah, the overarching theme, yeah, that, like of all of like what we have to say is like it, it's an individual thing. Like you are an individual, you choose how to be. Like just focus on you. Like if you change you. And you positively share your sh like your stuff, then you're doing your part. Mm -hmm. like, and I think that like people get mad when they are like doing their things and sharing their things, and people don't listen. It's like a trigger, you know what I mean? They're like, "Oh no, like I'm not being heard. Listen to me, listen to me. This is my agenda. This is my agenda. Listen to me, listen to me." It's like, "Oh, oh my gosh." Check yeah. your root chakra, bitch. <laughs> Check your root chakra because <laughs> you sound like you have a <laughs> some unresolved it's issues, not, right? <laughs> <laughs> so it's just like mm. just do the work. 
that is that is gonna be do the work like the overarching model of this this whole season (laughs) just do the work like and this was like totally unintentional we're like six episodes into this point we kind of just stumbled upon that ourselves so obviously like it's not something um that is always going to be clear and present um when you get started on something or even if it's just like you know hey like i really want to get in shape like you got to start doing work like that's definitely a part of a, like a journey that i'm on like getting back in gym getting back into like meal planning and just being completely healthy and like better um it, yeah um it really is just like doing the work mm-hmm. um and on that note I think that's like a good kind of place to like wrap it up a good little like sentiment to send you off with some little homework. Um, you know, just investing yourself. Your homework. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I definitely did not or mean to make it a pen, but <laughs> or a pen a pun. Um, but you know, whatever. Um, so yeah, I guess this has been another episode of tea and tequila. I love it. I'll call you next week. Bye. Bye.